as the footy media nurse, a collective hangover from Gather Round, a top of the ladder after five rounds, sits a big, big sound. Carlton sealed its unbeaten start following a furious umpire sledge after a mark was paid that deviated more than Stuart Broad's Ashes Edge. The Lions got back on track against the Roos. The Brownlow form of Hemi continued. And up in Mount Barker, the Chew Man debuted. To dissect everything from Gather Round and look towards Round 5, this is Triple M Footy's midweek rub with two-time All-Australian Lee Montagna. Very nice, Rabsy. Yes, nice to be here. It's, uh, I can't say I've recovered just fully <laughs> yet, but... Uh, that's it. 24 hours away and the footy's back on again. I oh, know. Collingwood's best first-year player in 2006, Daisy <laughs> Thomas. Yes, thank you, Rabsy. I'm a little bit like Joey. It's mm. good to be back, but I'm not recovered. So <laughs> no. this could be an interesting <laughs> show. And the head enchilada at afl.com.au, Damien Barrett. Hello, Rabsy. And it's uh, one of those experiences you have where you just can't get enough of it for the first two and a half days, and three days, and you can't then can't <laughs> yeah. wait to get out of there. It's yeah. got a real Vegas vibe about it. You're so excited to get there on the plane, and then by a day and a half in, you're like, right, where's the exit? I it's need a... to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. But I think people are, aren't they sick of us talking about it in the media? It's become a real thing. Everyone's yeah. like, get over it. Like, yes, we get you had a good time. So we won't bang on about it too much. I was just well, trying to encourage people who haven't got experience yeah, no, in the right. two years that's okay. been running to, we, to do so. We, it's worth it. I went out to Mount Barker. That was quite a, a good spot to go and watch some footy. You watched uh, the Eagles play. Yes. Which was very, very good. A young Harley yeah. Reid was out ah, there in fine form. Coming of age game. And yes. the way he's fended off the tackles. Fended and... off, broke tackles. Hey, I gave you a little um, a snippet. Ethan passed a note across about Harley Reid breaking the most tackles by first year player. You no, were... no, just the most. Ever. Uh, it, was the most it was the second most tackles ever in a game. Right. Broken. So I gave you that to run on first crack. Yeah. Just a little, you know, looking after each other, fellow Triple team M player. man, you team know, man. team player. Yep. I was very surprised when I was waiting for it to come on as I was going to do my points bet spot that Kingy went with that as a stat. Oh, yeah. oh, a stat wow. off. Wow. <laughs> well, Daisy, I thought the way that you <laughs> made, the way that you told it to me on the Sunday, I thought it was this golden little nugget that oh, nobody he's knew put about. It down. That nobody knew about. And then when I've gone in a five, I've got this nugget. Everyone's like, yeah, it's everyone knows this stat that he broke seven oh, tackles and no he's leading way. the league with 11 broken tackles no, already. No, so I think you do. It wasn't a little, went with it. It wasn't oh, a little yeah, nugget. It was a power dirty. move. There was a power <laughs> struggle. And Kingy got the laptop up <laughs> and said, I am going with this, Joey. Sit down. True yeah. or false? Uh, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> true. I know my place. I know my place. But uh, it was exciting, actually. Harley Reid, like he's starting to live up to the hype. That's and, the and first game we've seen it. He's mm. played four games of footy and he's the best tackle breaker in the competition. <laughs> and it's now, ridiculous. And this week he comes up against the uh, the oh. man he's maybe modelled part of that game that he's got on, as in Dusty Martin. 100% there's going to be a moment where Harley Reid fends off Dusty. You can just sense it, can't <laughs> you? Or the other way around. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. hey yeah. young fella, get back in your box. Uh, yeah. that, should be, uh, that should be good. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, is that all we got? <laughs> oh, we're not going to bang on about Gather Round yeah. too much. Because, uh, no, I think we've moved on. Everyone's, sort of, everyone's a bit over that. But uh, the footy was good anyway. I thought there were some opportunities for teams to make a statement. Damo, we got sucked into the Bombers. Well, I sort of led you in. I thought they were a rough little sneaky yeah. as an outsider. But, I thought they could match Port Adelaide at the clearance. They could maybe expose them with their offense, but never again. That's Jasper, you and I. Never again get sucked into the Bombers. Jasper put that up as a tile on Triple M just so there was a pile in. I know. That's <laughs> how I, yeah, and then I've seen all the... Did you know, any no, time, all these time, I got these heaps of messages. Oh, that aged well. That aged like milk. <laughs> but you didn't tip them, though, did you? No, it was an, it was an outsider. Yeah, outside, it was a yeah. bit of a smoke. Yeah. So, and at a quarter you. time, you yeah. probably uh, had your chest out yeah. and patting yourself on the back. And then three quarters after that, uh, Didn't age well, Jasper. Here we go. Well, um, the games weren't great at Gather Round, but the two late on Saturday, the Carlton Fremantle game was great. And then the night game between the Bulldogs and Cats was sensational, I thought. Yeah. That was the best game of the week. It was. And there was the drama around the Collingwood game too and the mm. Ginevan component to that being the last game yeah. of the, the round. And I, I think he stood up, Ginevan. Um, a lot of focus on him. He talked it up. He's talked it up uh, post the game as well. And the two goals he kicked, he was always dangerous and they nearly stole it, but they didn't. But uh, yeah, I'm keen to get your views actually uh, as we preview the, the next round of footy in the later on today on our, on our show uh, as to where the pies are at because I think there's worries there. And you're a big fan of Guinea, aren't you? You, like, you love the side show yeah. that comes uh, with it. And the, well, you, if you're going to do it, you've got to back it up. And so far, he's continued to do that. He was obviously put on the big pedestal and the spotlight on him when Kane Corns went him after round one when he had the uh, GoPro, GoPro that year. Uh, but he's lived up to it. He then went and won an Anzac Day medal. He really doesn't give us stuff, so that's brilliant. <laughs> well, we will get those predictions coming up later on. Plus, Van Ickham or Fugazi. But up next, Damo, it is your news break, and we'll start with Jeremy Finn Layson. This is Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub. Time for some news, Damo. And Jeremy Finn Layson has found himself in some trouble with a homophobic slur 
against Essendon. Yeah, from an incident uh, on a Friday night match. And as we talk today, Wednesday, we always time code it. It's around 11 o'clock. We don't yet know what the AFL is going to do by way of its sanctioning. It's a, a strong possibility that could be revealed today. I, I feel it's dragged on a little bit too long already. Um, we knew and the AFL knew post-match, even before Jeremy Finlayson had left the ground, that there was an issue. He admitted to it. He apologised to the player in question and he's subsequently made public statements around it. I don't know what we're waiting for before we actually come down with the sanction. And I hope, for the competition's perspective, that it is a match ban sanction and maybe even a multiple match ban sanction. I was strong on the Alistair Clarkson part of that too, Days and, and Joey and, and Rabsy, that he should have been sanctioned by way of a, a suspension. Um, he was given a suspended sentence and fined and required to attend counselling, as Finlayson will. But to me, it would have been very, very easy now for the AFL to, to then have a blueprint for what needed to happen with this Jeremy Finlayson thing. But I feel they've uh, let it drag out too long. Yeah, before we get our thoughts, why is what's your theory for why it's taken so long? Why has it taken up to four or five days to come down with a sanction? It, it does not make sense mm. to me, G- given it's clear card. I mean, I, I mean, in some ways you don't even need to speak to does Finlayson. Does that mean they're speaking to multiple? Are there multiple people involved? But why? Do, I, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't I mean, no. what, what if is the it? story's all the same, yeah, yeah, it yeah. should have been dealt with by Monday. It, it should have been dealt with by Monday. There's no real investigation. There's no real investigation into it. It's and it's okay like to science. say we need to speak to Jeremy Finlayson. Well, that's fine. You, you're in the same town as him when that happened, and and. I think you can make your decisions on these and then speak yeah. to him subsequent as well because he admitted to it and he's apologised publicly. So I don't get it. I, I really hope, though, there's some clarity around it. Look, people, I, I think, had initial views and may still hold those views that this is an overreaction. To me, it's not. And we just continue, in my eyes, to walk past moments like this without properly sanctioning. And I feel it's time that in 2024... A few things are being straightened up. I think this one needs to be absolutely straightened up. And I, and I hope there's also a reference to why Alistair Clarkson wasn't suspended from match involvement because he was given the right to then partake and coach in the very next game. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think we need to evolve with what's happening in the times at the moment and what was not acceptable but sort of looked past by an AFL point of view in years past isn't going to happen now. So it's an opportunity to make a clear and strong stance and statement in and around this. And Jeremy Finlayson will be a little bit of the example, as we've seen, you know, it's not too dissimilar to head high contact and that if you're going to do it, you put yourself out there to some sort of sanction. And one, two, however many weeks plus a fine, would be very happy to see it go down that path and ongoing continue to grow. Well, Taylor Walker got how many weeks for a racist remark? It, it was, was up six, six weeks. Wasn't it? So yeah. I'm Which sure I what, thought was like two. Yeah, it's in it's yeah. in the same it's in the same basket now. I mean, it, it, it is all vilification, whichever way you want to look at it. So it's got to be. Uh, in that same bracket. It's just disappointing, I think, a little bit for Finlayson that they didn't make a statement with the Alistair Clarkson one. In hindsight, mm. I think, and the AFL will probably regret that too because that could have been the stand and the statement right then and there. Mm. They didn't. Um, and now it's going to be Jeremy Finlayson that is going to be the one that's going to uh, to sort of be the, the face, of, not so much the face, but the forefront of a statement yep. going forward that this is completely unacceptable. And the players have enough education in and around this. Every year you get yep. presented to by the AFL, the AFLPA about race, religion, sexual orientation, and, and there's no grey area on this. It's either you've done the wrong thing or you've steered mm. clear uh, entirely. So whatever the sanction is, uh, you know, six weeks, if you're going to throw that out there in line with the race and religion stuff, you you couldn't disagree or argue against it. Yep. Priority picks. We've had this conversation on this show regularly. I'm absolutely against them under all circumstances. So I'm not going to change my tune now that West Coast has uh, just put it out there in the marketplace with other people around the club, not the club itself, but uh, conduits to it. I- I'm I'm against it, Joey. Uh, I know you've occasionally had the mm-hmm. different views on, on on the circumstances in front at the time. Um, yeah. Should they get one? I- I- I'm saying no, regardless of how bad this club yeah, is. Yeah, I know. I'm open to it because for the sake of the competition, West Coast need to be competitive. And, and I just don't think the way the draft system works, these teams that are down the bottom don't get enough of an opportunity with, uh, with the way that it works to actually get up the ladder anytime soon. That's why I've been strong on Hawthorne's rebuild is still ages away. North Melbourne's, even with all the compensation picks they've got, is still a number of years away. And if West Coast don't get any support and extra selections, they're still going to be years away. And if we're okay with that as a competition, to have West Coast being horrible for another three or four years, well, then don't get one. But for me, as someone who doesn't really have a vested interest in any of the teams, for the sake of the competition, I know that everyone says, well, they've created their own rod for their back, but any team that is horrible have somehow created a rod for their own back to be in that situation. I'm okay for them getting one. Would they have been better to split up the Harley Reid pick? 
Uh, you're not going to know that till down the track. Because if Harley Reid ends up being one of the all-time greats, and we've seen if you split two picks that are, it's happened in the past, they're not as good, then no, it wouldn't have been better. But in the position they are where they're now asking for extra compensation to take one pick and turn it into numerous... Wouldn't that have been a smarter list management decision? Uh, Unless you've got the next Chris Jard who right. might be playing another club who you had access to, mm. and then I think you leave yourself exposed. I, I'm a big believer. Take the best player at that point when you've got it and make that decision. And and by all reports and what we've seen at this point, yeah. I, th- I think they'd be comfortable with that part of it, wouldn't they? No, I yeah. completely agree. They're comfortable yep. with where they sit. But if you're looking for greater depth, mm. the option to have one superstar that you don't really have the ability to be able to decide around or get two or three players with picks that, that can then come in and play roles in and around that. Just one for a bit of thought. Yep. Uh, when I ask you guys who is the most exciting player in the competition, does the, the name Shea Bolton immediately come to mind by some distance these days? Yeah, it does. He's, he's a top 20 player in the game, and he's probably the most unique in the way that he plays. I mean, most of those top 20 would be you know key positional, pure midfielders. He's, I mean, he almost single-handedly beat St Kilda yeah. there on the weekend. Like, it was incredible what he was doing. He's a freak. The challenge sometimes for the coaches is how best to utilize him. Is it just forward? Is it the mid forward role? Do you let him just, you know, do whatever he likes? Because when he does that, my God, he's exciting. It's incredible for such a skilled player at times how poor he can kick for goal. He's a snapper. He's a shocking snapper. But he, he tries yeah. to snap and he hits the belly of the ball too much. <laughs> yeah. Or if he goes with a drop punt, he doesn't execute. If he if you just threw in the ball, picked it up blind, and said kick for goal, he'd nail it every time. <laughs> I think there's gonna, there should be an opportunity and an option for him by the coaches just to say, mate, throw the ball on the ground <laughs> yeah. as part of your walk in for goal. If you're having a set shot, pick yeah. it up and just kick it. Yeah. Don't worry about going back and putting pressure on yourself. But he's absolutely, he's blockbuster. He's bums on seats. Is, is he by some distance in that category? Uh, he, there's other, who's coming to mind? Connor Rose was coming to mind mm-hmm. on the weekend for a different, he probably doesn't have the ability to take hangers. But yeah. what he's doing, he's also bums on seats. But in terms of that, yeah, the all round That old fashioned excitement yeah. individual. Yeah, the package. highlight. The human highlight, highlight reel. Yeah. No, he's number one. Yeah. Yeah. I think Toby Green still does certain things that put him in that category, but, but he's more consistent yeah. now, isn't he? And he's more team Toby's now playing based. like a captain, though. Yeah. So yeah, he's not right. launching, launching yeah. four deep for hangers. He's like coming he, front and center. And he's now yeah. doing things like passing the ball off days when he's on the boundary <laughs> line and stuff like that. Absolute horseshit. Like uh, Cosy Pickett uh, suspended um, again Thursday night incident uh, tribunal hearing Tuesday night. I'll get off that rant again, but um, <laughs> we'll just move on. He, uh, the the one week ban stands uh, as a result of the tribunal throwing it out on the Saligo hit. To me, it was never going to get off. No. Uh, Christian Petrarca last night on Fox Footy though uh, had this to say after the verdict had come through. From Cosy's perspective, I don't want him to change the way he plays. I think he plays with an intensity and an edge about him that I, that I, as a teammate, I love playing with. His, his pressure in the forward 50 is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would love to have him play week in, week out and, and not be missing for suspension. Yeah, I know he'd be bitterly disappointed with his action, but um, I think I don't want him to lose that edge because I, I love the way he plays. He doesn't want him to change, but he keeps getting suspended um, three times now since mm-hmm. the start of last season. He, he will find a balance. Though. He has to yeah, change those. Yeah, 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 but uh, finding a balance and completely changing the way you play oh. yeah, are two completely different things, in my opinion. Well, he hasn't you don't it want, yet. And he, he hasn't, no. Yeah. But we've seen this, you know, the way Toby Green used to play, he's managed to evolve. We're just talking about it from being studs up and, you know, Lifting elbows, doing all sorts of things. I gouge you. Oh, yeah, well, that's probably not <laughs> ideal either. I like the way that Cozzy does play because when he's running people down, when he comes into the frame... No, from I get nowhere, all that. I get all that. But there's now been three moments where he's taken heads off in situations that are uh, in a short period the, of time. Days. Again, a, a small split second wrong decision. I think Missing games of footy, though. Yeah, I know, but hurts. it is a fine line because these players that play on the edge yeah. sometimes do go over that's, the edge and yeah. you have to sometimes go, well, that type of player is going to happen. But I agree that I think he can adjust. Well, come to a prelim well, finally does it? Oh, but does but he want to change then? Would you rather, rather have him change then? Well, would you rather get to the prelim with him being the player well, that he is so, he you know, kicks, with his edge? He I don't kicks know. four it's... and gets you in. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you're not at the edge, you're playing below it. He's right on it with stepping over sometimes. I'd rather that than the other way where he pulls out of contest. We should right. do a list one day, the players that play on the edge. And let's see whether, like, is Braden Maynard going to get suspended again at some stage? Because he plays on the edge. And, and when he's slightly off, he's not the same player. Um, there are players like that. We played with, with teammates. Stephen Baker was in that category for us. We would never have wanted him to change, but got suspended a lot. Um, but yes, I think he can get rid of that, the arm, the, the bump that he's, that he's doing on occasion and maybe just practice tackling a bit more. Well, Melbourne take on Brisbane tomorrow night at the MCG without Cosy yeah, Pickett. We'll hurt. get your mm. predictions for round five soon. But up next, it's Fair Income or Fugazi on Triple M Footy's midweek rub. Joey, Daisy and Damo, all thanks to BWS. Now on the midweek rub, it's... Yeah.
It's been the talk of the town since Saturday afternoon, Damo. I went to Fugazi just to <clears> jump oh, yeah, in. How good. Oh. That's as good a restaurant yeah. as there is in Australia. I what think everyone went to Fugazi. What did you have? What was on the menu? Uh, got, got the uh, the full quota, actually. I was a, at a group function with the uh, Premier and a lot of other oh. media people and um, Hello. managed, Hello. To, managed Hello. to work my way through the menu. Oh, yeah. wow. Delightful. One of the it's past very good. Four. The uh, fusilli with the um, Italian sausage might have got yeah, the three the, votes. Um, yeah, the Finocchio sausage. Oh, gee whiz. Mm. Oh, Joey, fair Sorry dinkum, about that. Fair dinkum, <laughs> fair dinkum <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Damo rubbing shoulders with Peter Malinowskis. <laughs> oh, that's fair dinkum. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Damo, it's time for a captain's challenge. No, that is uh, Fagazzi. Uh, no, not big at all on this being the case. We, we, we'd stuff it up too the way we <laughs> control and review these situations. So no, definite for Gazi. Why? For that reason. That we, we'll we'd, st- we'd stuff it up. It yeah, and, and, and I think it's it slow the minutes. game down even further. We wouldn't mm-hmm. have the right vision that the captain wants to have checked anyway. And, and it would just be a mess. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why it did was a caveat that would have to be like in a proper, get it done properly, not just throw it out there next week. But I just think we've got to be open to it one day because, I mean, these are games decided by it. Everyone talks about we don't want to stop play. We now stop play for an injured player with a sore leg to walk off the ground. We stop play for boundary umpires to have a, a conference to see if the ball was off someone's shin or not. We have stops in play <laughs> to recall a bad bounce, which we accepted for 100 years. We stop play now for score reviews that go through the middle of the goals. I don't think one more st- uh, stoppage oh, yeah. to The game to, could to start Friday and finish Sunday and if then, we continue down this And all those other, mes- those other points I just mes- uh, mentioned about stopping play, why don't we get rid of all them as well and let the game flow? Then we'd all be happy. Mm, happy uh, we'll, all right. we'll continue with you, Joey. <laughs> uh, St. Kilda's second half show they've matured as a football team. Um, or, no, I think it's Fugazi because the first half show they maybe haven't matured enough just yet. That was really disappointing. So full credit to the third quarter, but I'm more concerned about the other three quarters at this stage. Uh, Daisy, Richmond are one and four to start the season, but there's a lot to like about that young playing group. Yeah, that's fair, Dinkum. Uh, they are having a crack. Their system looks okay outside of the first round. Look, they're probably void of a little bit of talent at the minute with some of their big injuries that they've had. But in terms of a Richmond fan, when you rock up to watch a game, you know as a minimum they're going to bring effort and intensity and have a red-hot crack. They've done that, unfortunately. They just haven't been able to get enough wins. Damo, the Bulldogs squandered an all-time great midfield performance from Liver. Yeah, fair dinkum. And throw in the fact that he was backed up on that matching question by Bonson Pally and Trelaw also having very good games amongst very good careers. It's hard to believe that trio, and back to the focus on Libertore, maybe the best game he's played in an extraordinary career, uh, wasn't able to be capitalised upon against Geelong and get the four points. I know they went close, but that wasn't good enough. Some of the numbers are ridiculous. Yeah. 35 disposals, 28. nine tackles, a goal, 28 contested, yeah. 10 score involvements. Well, just a good reminder, it's a team game. The system beats mm. individual talent. As great as those individual performances were, it's a bit all about 18 players but in the field, the he, team getting it done, and that's what the Cats are doing. He's still so unassuming in the way he goes about it. Sort of like yeah. scurries from yeah. pack yeah. to pack, gets in there, rips the ball yeah. out, always gets a handball out. Never doesn't gets, kick it long. Doesn't kick no. it long, doesn't <laughs> kick it far. No. no, it's brilliant. Joey, teams need to start putting time into Grian Myers. Yeah, that's fair, Dinkum. He's, his numbers offensively stack up with the best players in the competition. What he does from a score involvement point of view, from setting up goals, he's right up there with the Petrarcas and the Bontempellis and Toby Green. So, with yes, the numbers. Yeah, yeah, his numbers. He's top five in that in those categories around those guys with his. Um, Did Kingy tell you that? No, I found those. <laughs> I ones. told him yeah, that. But, uh, <laughs> the ability to set up goals and be involved in scoring chains. So yes, I think teams should start putting more work into Grian. Damo Justin Longmuir's presser was the most composed performance of the weekend. That's. Uh, I'm going to give that one a fair dinkum. He, he was very. Good, wasn't mm. he? The way he, he acknowledged what had happened, uh, gave it a context, but then said, we have to be better as a club in those moments. So, yeah, good call. Fair dinkum. Has his heart rate got above 100 ever? <laughs> <laughs> Even when they win, he's, he's sort of the same yeah. amount of composed. Daisy, uh, Harley Reid's Guernsey grab was a jab at the media types who said he'd leave quickly. 100%. That is fair dinkum. That was a real sign that I'm here. I want to play for this jumper. Took him a bit long to kick a goal, four rounds in. Come mm. on, Harley. But uh, <laughs> out, outside of that, that was fair dinkum. And you got to love it. As a West Coast fan, as someone from the West Coast Eagles who's gotten him, for him to show that sort of passion, big tick. Joey, the buy comes at a good time for Collingwood and Scott Pendlebury. 
Yeah, that's fair dinkum. Yeah, they're, they're just going and Pendle's got the broken ribs. He's not mm. going to like that. So how many weeks is he going to miss, do we know? Two to three? Well, Stephen May only missed one. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why he's never gone back with the flight <laughs> yeah. before, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can find me vision of Pendle's going back with the flight, I will eat my hat. It was a hospital ball, unfortunately, for Pendle's. Uh, he's, uh, those old bones don't need uh, a knee right in the back of him. So hopefully... He they're getting chalky. Up and, uh, he so you're going to say it's going to take them longer to heal because they're older. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're uh, chalky. The bones are getting chalky. <laughs> well, that, that's a fact. Don't old people take longer right. to heal? <laughs> I mean, not that he's old, but he's older than most players. It, he's nearly uh, not a football incident. He's nearly having a fall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Daisy, Carl- Carlton being 4-0 and oh and winning ugly without Sam Walsh should scare everyone. Uh, no, I think that's Fugazi. I'm, I'm very much in the, the camp that it's good to bank wins by a, a smaller mar- uh, small margin rather than losing the games, but also there needs to come a point where you're good enough to win by more than 10 points. Mm. We saw it with the Pies. They were the real anomaly, uh, and they were good enough to do it on the back half of some really good system. For the Blues at the moment, my concern is that they're getting in positions where they could put sides away. They don't. They allow them back in. And if you continue to do that with the evenness of the competition, there's a chance it will come back to bite you in the butt. In the butt. In the the butt. butt. He's on fire at the moment. (laughs) Uh, Damien Barrett. Fair Nikamu Fugazi, the Essendon edge. Doesn't exist, so it's a uh, it's for Gazzy. I, I keep saying I, I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it before they started talking about it. I then thought, okay, well they've gone public with it. Let's see it. And for the last three quarters in the most recent game, it was non-existent. So uh, yeah, it does not exist mm-hmm. for Gazzy in mm-hmm. terms of how that question was posed. <laughs> Daisy, off the back of that, the only mob that had a worse gather around than Essendon was the SA Tourism Board asking for Adelaide not to be called Radelaide or City of Churches. Yeah, that's fair dinkum. What, what else do you call it? Like Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. yeah but in terms of you know having some fun with mm. it, there's some other ones on the internet that have gone around which are pretty interesting as well. Um, but no, no, ra- repeat here. no, none no. of that. Uh, <laughs> Radelaide and the City of Churches. The City of Churches used to be on the number plates. Mm. Uh, you know, we used yeah. to be the Garden State. Garden they used State, to have yeah. the City of Churches. Come on, Radelaide. Uh, Joey, I'm going to play you some audio. Yes, that's right. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Welcome to the Sunday Rub, where it promises to be an interesting hour and a half ahead. We've had a massive round of footy over there at Gather Round. And uh, well, fair to say the boys have enjoyed themselves uh, on and off the pitch, I think. We're going to speak to Dale Thomas in one second, but he looks like he's in magnificent form and some huge results yesterday, of course. The first couple of games... We're thrashings, let's be honest, but uh, Geelong by four points over the Western Bulldogs last night and Carlton (laughs) by 10 over Fremantle. It was a controversial finish. We'll get to that in a second. Also some news kicking around. Jeremy Fenlayson, an ugly incident. And uh, Sammy Walsh will have Shut an up, update. Shut up, Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> <Get to the talent. laughs> Joey, Jay Clark needs a hard timeout on his intros. <laughs> 100%. That was longer second time around than it was at the time. We were all looking at each other like, when's he going to throw to us? Oh. <laughs> that was painful, Jay-Z. Get to the point and get to the chase next time. Having now heard chase. it, I was aware of it. Having now heard it, I'm surprised it took you that long to be <laughs> Well, I started yawning. <laughs> 42 seconds. Yeah. Oh. He told us the <laughs> exact <intro>. show. <laughs> Uh, Damo, uh, Ross Lyon must have been a big X-Files, X-Files guy. I'll tell you what happened. We actually landed a UFO in and walked out 22 aliens and put on the St Kilda jumper 23 and went out <laughs> and played. So we flipped the team. Fair dinkum or for guys. <laughs> Fair dinkum. And he, I think he can throw the Twilight Zone into his, uh, <laughs> into his uh, previous uh, TV viewing repertoire. Rossi being humorous. <laughs> Joey being here, bro. <laughs> Sticking with you, Damo. A little bit more audio here. Just take your calf. Or is it calf mandu or cat mandu? Cat mandu, is it? <laughs> take that up to Mount Barker. She'll be freezing cold. Cat mandu, that was me, Arnie. <laughs> cat mandu. <laughs> Daisy, Thomas. <laughs> Daisy Thomas was BOG on and off air for Triple M at Gather Room. I have heard this. That's yeah. a fair dinky. I think he's also Mr. Beat, given that the comedy festival is in town <laughs> yes. in Melbourne uh, in this uh, current uh, time <laughs> on the calendar. I think you should be. Uh, yeah, that was having good. your own. Have you got the audio when he went with who wants to pin the ears back? <laughs> <laughs> Poor odd text. Uh, finally, Joey, you're going to finish with this one. This is a bit of Chew Man at Mount Barker. Giants feeling the pressure in the back half of the ground, closing the first game up. GWS by a point. Five to go before half time. Long kick towards the teeth of goal. The pack fly. Bringing it to ground was Wits Miller. Clever little hand pass of Roses. Little gift to Rao. Kick around the body from 25 as he put it through. Matty Rao. 
He has! Suns regain the lead. They move on a 7-6-48 to the Giants, 7-1-43, 4-40 to go before half-time. Fair income or Fugazi, Ash Chua should legally change his name to Dennis Chumetti after his <laughs> commentary <laughs> performance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that's Fugazi. Oh. You know, yeah, he's not quite in Dennis Chumetti league just yet. We don't want to puppy him up too much. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice start for the Chew man, and uh, he did well. Well done to him. But, yeah, not quite Dennis Chumetti league just yet. Well, he's gone back to stats for tomorrow night, and we will get your predictions for round five. He was very good. He was. Coming up next on Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub, Joey, Daisy, and Dame. We're going to get to your game, around five game predictions coming up soon. But, Damo, you flagged earlier. You want to chat about Collingwood, who have the bye this week, along with Sydney. Just want to get the two experts in the footy conversations' uh, view on where they're at. Obviously, uh, set up a really nice lead, a 38-point buffer at one stage against Hawthorne. Just fell in when it's all said and done. It didn't. Re- I didn't uh, take any great confidence out of this club having now got itself back on track. I know that uh, they now go to the by with a couple of wins, but uh, I, I don't see a premiership team uh, in the making here. No, I'm with you. And, and they, it was interesting. They changed their style. They played a much more sort of uh, defensive, sort of locked the ball in the front half, played a bit wider than they had in, in uh, previous years. So no, not at this stage for me, they, they might play finals. They might be good enough to sneak into the top eight, but I don't have them as one of those sort of top four prelim contenders at this stage. I think the buyers come at a perfect time. They get the get to the buy two and three, a chance to regroup and just assess and and properly have a look at what they've been doing well, what they've been doing wrong, and that's probably the biggest part at the moment. But how they've turned it around, even go back and watch what you're able to do last year to get that confidence. I think that's probably the biggest thing that's changed. That ability for them to believe they're winning from everywhere has probably been dented by what they did in the first three rounds of the year. I think this is a nice opportunity to reset, go again. So you're not ruling them out? No, absolutely okay. not. No, I'll hold judgment to late in the year because I do still think the side hasn't changed a whole lot, apart from a couple of blokes getting which older. Which might be its problem, though, too. Yeah, which could be. Yeah. I grant you that. But you look at Geelong. You know, they're still the same side last year, albeit a couple of younger kids coming in, and you could draw the same comparisons to the Pies. I still have great faith that they'll be there and going deep enough into September. They could get him back for the finals, but have they missed Dan McStay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dan McStay is an important piece. Yep, absolutely. And Nathan Murphy as well. Don't underestimate mm. his importance too. So that they're already on the back foot coming into the year. Yep. All right. So tomorrow night, huge game. It's Melbourne versus Brisbane at the MCG Domo. The Ds are without Cozzy Pickets. Yeah, they are. Uh, they're also a bit banged up too. We saw what Stephen May did by way of courage to come back just one week out um, from uh, the rib and, and back damage. I, I've taken the view with Melbourne after they had that first uh, game I'll say disaster because they set themselves for it against the Swans. Their response has been amazing. I know they set themselves hard for those two games in Adelaide, got the wins there, Port Adelaide, then the Crows. They've got a bike coming after this after this week. I feel they've just set themselves to this moment. So for that reason, Rabsy, mm-hmm. long-winded way of saying Melbourne. Uh, you know I've been a big Melbourne fan, been on them since the start of the year. I didn't write them off. Um, but I've just got a gut feel this is oh, Brisbane's yeah. big opportunity. I think Melbourne are a little bit banged up. They've had a, a really good block um, leading into the bye. Uh, I'm giving Brisbane a sniff. I think this is their opportunity. Otherwise, they go one and four. It makes it hard to play finals. So I think they'll get themselves up and potentially cause an upset. I'm tipping Melbourne, but Brisbane are my ups- my outsider. This is season-defining for the yeah, Lions. If they don't win this and then the couple of games to come, they could find themselves one and six pretty comfortably. In saying that, I, I think it's going to be tough. Melbourne are going along. It's defense v. offense. You've got uh, Charlie Cameron, Joe Danaher, Eric Hipwood against May, Lever, and Judd McVee. You brought him to the table last year. I think it was, Joey, for what sort of a role he can play on the smalls. Very good last week. Uh, against an Isaac Rankin, I think the Ds, you just have to take on trust at the minute and what their form is. Disappointing on the weekend where Essendon, they come up against the Western Bulldogs on Friday night. Do you give them a sniff? Oh. Well, you have to this... because these two teams, as well as the Western Bulldogs play, we know what they're like. They're always inconsistent and they drop games they shouldn't. Essendon sometimes find their best in their mojo and they win games that sort of surprise. So anything's possible in this one. The Western Bulldogs should be winning. Let's be fair. I like the way they're playing. I think they're playing really solid. Defensively, they are sound behind the ball at the moment. Buku Kamas mm. and Liam Jones are mopping up everything. Ed Richards and Bailey Dale. So they're, they're playing some really solid footy, the dogs. So I'd be disappointed if the Western Bulldogs lost. I'm going to go the same way. Uh, the soft tissue spate of injuries now at Essendon's kicked back in again. There's five good players who'd be playing if they were available, but they're out for soft tissue. And I'm worried about where they're at. Those last three quarters against Port were damning for me. So Bulldogs. I couldn't agree more with both of you. 
The Giants play at their second home in Canberra against the Saints. Daisy, how do you see this game playing out? Well, Canberra, an interesting one. The Giants lost both their games there last mm. year, but I think they are a different side. That was also earlier on in the year than what they did back half. Look, I think they should be winning this one. Again, it's a team that scores a lot, 100 plus in all of their games so far this season, coming up a against the Saints team that uh, sort of averages around 75, 80 points per game. So I think with the firepower and the confidence at the minute, the Giants will be winning. Yeah, it'd have to be a Ross Lyon masterclass to win this. I think they've got a better midfield, the Giants. Their back line is elite, led by Buckley and Sam Taylor. Sam and they've Taylor. got a forward mm. line that's mm. and a forward line that's humming. So it would take a Rossi masterclass to Giants win this. Sam Taylor, Taylor, the best defender in the league? 100%. Yeah, he's the best. He has been for yeah. a while, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, injured last year, so he wasn't able to back up. He's a 2022 All-Australian. Had he not been injured, I think he would have. And yeah. 21 degrees in Canberra on Saturday as well. So Whoa. perfect conditions. Don't worry about packing your Kathmandu. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is your auntie going? She's there. Uh, Carlton versus Adelaide. Do we oh. give the Crows a sniff? They're probably the most disappointing side of 2024 so far. I'm making mate. the Blues my certainty of the, the week. I just feel with Sam Walsh expected to come back in as we are talking on this Wednesday uh, late morning. Mm-hmm. And I just reckon they're shot, the Crows. I don't like it. They've got no spark. And the only times they have spark is when they're trying to play catch-up footy in the last 15 minutes of games. I don't like what they're doing. And Blues will get it right. I'll be tipping the Blues, but I'm slightly nervous. The Crows just have to have one last shot at the stumps in them. And their best, as we know, with the talent on the list is good enough. They haven't found it yet, but at some point, I've been sucked in. This yeah. is three weeks in a row now. But, yeah, hopefully the Blues get it done. Nah, Blues win this one. I'm with Damo. They're my certainty. Gold right. Coast versus Hawthorne at People First Stadium. Potentially could be a really good game here, Damo. It could be. Yeah, it could be. I, and I liked uh, what both clubs did last week. They both lost, but they both had genuine cracks. Uh I, look, I think it's it's logical to say that the, the Gold Coast Suns are the tip, but it wouldn't surprise me. But Gold Coast Suns, mm-hmm. six out of ten confidence levels. Yeah, hopefully the Hawks get a bit of confidence of their second half and, and play some better footy. But same with Damo, you've got to lean towards Gold Coast at this stage. 5.1% confidence for me. <laughs> <Gold Coast laughs> okay, 7.3. Oh, okay, slightly higher. Uh, your club that you work or not work for returned to the scene of the crime on Saturday night, Joey. Freo up against Port Adelaide. Yeah, it could be game of the round, this one. Mm. Uh, this will be an absolute beauty. Two elite midfields, as well as, you know, Rosie Butters, Horn Francis and Willem Drew are going. Uh, you could argue that Sarong Brayshaw, Fife and Jackson are going just as well. Sean Maybe Darcy Sean Darcy back. maybe mm. come back. Mm. Um, Going to be a great battle. Got to lean towards Port Adelaide at home. They are looking dynamite at the moment. I want to go with Port right now, but it's one of those ones that with a bit, another 24 hours of thought around it and processing what has happened to this point of this season, I, I could possibly sway, but I have to give an answer now, Port. If Port win this, I'm chips in on them playing in the grand final. Oi. Chips in. I've seen enough. Watching them on the weekend, they destroyed the Bombers. Connor Rosie, watching his work rate and where he gets to, he's very close to becoming the best midfielder in the comp. Who would you take right now if you could put one into your team, Rosie or Butters? You know I love Zach Butters, yeah. but probably Rosie at the minute. Wow. Kicking three goals and having 35, 700 metres plus, that's a very rare, rarely sighted game and a, a bloke that can do it consistently. Uh, the Sunday rub game down at GMHBA <laughs> Stadium. Uh, Geelong versus North Melbourne, Daisy. Yeah, the WhatsApp, cool. WhatsApp chat was lighting up. Daisy Thomas is the Oracle. Geelong will win this game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's another out-of-body experience. The way the Oracle's been going, North win by five in an upset. Um, No, Geelong by how far? Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to get down there, though. It'll be fun, though. We'll make it a good call. Yeah, I'm not going, so it's good. Is Joe G hosting? (laughs) (laughs) No, we won't. (laughs) Uh, Actually, I think he is. Oh, really? (laughs) Daisy will have to bring his best. (laughs) And finally, (laughs) West Coast versus Richmond to finish off the round. Do we give West Coast a chance? They could win a game here. If they play like they did last week, there's got to be a chance. Mm -hmm. Got to be a chance. You just wrapped up the Tigers. I'm not saying they'll win. Fair Dinkum for Gazi segment. I did. So the Tigers win. Yeah. Yeah. But West Coast can be competitive again. <laughs> yeah. They were very good against the Swans. They did play well. Mount Barker should be their new home. <laughs> <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> Tigers for me. Right. So wrapping up your certainties and your outsider quickly. Carlton is my certainty. Brisbane and my smoky to knock off these. Uh, Carlton equally my certainty. I reckon Frio is my outsider. Geelong is my certainty and Adelaide is my outsider. Well, you can catch every game live on Triple M and the listener app, starting with Melbourne versus Brisbane at the Triple MCG tomorrow night, following the Thursday rub pregame with Jack Heverin, Kate McCarthy, Isaac Smith and Jay Clark from 6pm. This has been Triple M Footy's Midweek Rub.